Hey, what's up, guys? How y'all doing today? Listen, sorry I am going live. What am I saying? Let's get right into this, you guys. There's a disturbing update in the bombshell lawsuit that embroils Diddy, Justin Combs, Stevie J, T.D. Jakes, what is believed to be Meek Mills, Usher, and Chris Brown. And that's just to name a few. You guys, Diddy and Justin have come out. And baby, it looks like they got the same lawyer. They are saying, baby, it's not us. Just to let you guys know, Diddy has unofficially responded to the lawsuit. His lawyer has unofficially responded to the lawsuit. Justin has unofficially responded to a lawsuit. Now, what do they unofficially stay in? Baby, before we get into this new evidence, because you know mama likes to do investigation, we are going to break down the legal docs. Now, I know I did a whole live where we went over all the legal docs. It was, what, 73, 83 pages? Now I'm breaking each section down into different videos. In this video, we're going to focus on Stevie J's denial. We're also going to spoke about that being him with an unidentified Caucasian male. We're also going to talk about the TG Jake stuff, TD Jake stuff. And most importantly, we're going to talk about the alleged kapow kapow that happened at Chalice Studios in Los Angeles, where Justin Combs and Diddy both said it was nothing but complete lies. It didn't happen. Mama did some investigation at Chalice Studios. And baby, if it's lies, baby, us being on planet Earth is a lie too. This evidence is going to destroy their alibis. And your girl was on the Scooby-Doo Would It Do mystery. And we got it. So where do y'all want to start first? Okay. First of all, let's talk about Stevie, well, actually, Stevie hasn't made a denial at all. Let's talk about, let's talk about Justin and Diddy's denial. Let's talk about the lawyer, Sean Hawley's denial. And let's talk about Stevie J's uh, denial. If you guys don't know, Sean Hawley is a attorney of great acclaim. She also was bought on the case to help out Diddy's lawyer, Jonathan Davis. Now, Sean Hawley has long been thought to be a lawyer that engages in smear campaigns. That is what she's brought on to do. And when the smear campaign has started up, she bounces. Now, do we know she's in, uh, uh, engaging in a smear campaign for Diddy? No, we do not. If you guys don't know who Sean Holly is, she represented Lindsay Lohan. She did a lot of stuff. She also was the woman that started the whole campaign. Well, she represented Tory Lanez when that whole social media campaign came of, did Meg Thee Stallion get shut? I don't know. There were fake doctor's reports put out. There were fake reports from the police put out. There was all this stuff. On top of that, in court, Tory Lanez said, Sean Hawley told him to basically start bribing people to say what he needed to say. Sean Hawley is also the lawyer that represented Chris Brown when he put them pause on Rihanna. Now, if you guys don't remember, Rihanna was not a big star. She was a star, of course, but she was not a big star when that happened. That could have destroyed her career. It was rumored. And much like what happened with Meg Thee Stallion and Tory Lanez, somehow, there was this covert smear campaign. Oh, Rihanna gave Chris the herb. Oh, Rihanna put her hand. I heard this. I heard that. Where it almost destroyed Rihanna's career. These whispers that happened that seemed like they were coming out of Sean Holly's camp. So when you ask yourself, why if they have Bobby Sternum? Why if they have Jonathan? Why do you need Sean Holly? Because Sean Holly's role, in my opinion, is to throw up smoke streams, is to throw up dirt, is to be able to, when I say unofficial denials, they're unofficial because I want everybody to pay attention what happens to in this Diddy stuff. Everybody says, why Cassie settle? Maybe Cassie fought the good fight. She literally opened the gates 
She opened the gate so others can run through. So much respect for Cassie for being the first person to go on record and stand on business against a man that if you believe was in these documents was so powerful. A bang, bang, bang could happen in the middle of LA. The police come and it stay off of the media. It stays off of the television. It's excuse me, it stayed off of TMZ. Baby, that's how powerful Diddy was. We kept wondering, how could this happen? How come no one? Tiffany Red told us Diddy got everything on lock. So let's go back to Justin and Diddy's denial and Sean Hawley's denial that little Rod is a liar and her thing. Listen, and Stevie J's, why do I call them unofficial denials? Because baby, we are now in the big leagues. We ask for this. We want Diddy, if everything that can be said is true, Stevie, um, Justin, anybody that was involved in underhand, disgusting, despicable acts of what can be believed here, okay? It is alleged right now. It has not been proven or disproven in a court of law. But let's get back into the unofficial denials because I want you guys to pay attention to what's happening on social media. At the helm of Sean Hawley, okay? Now, we don't know. We cannot say definitively whether she is on charge, but it's odd that every case she's on, this mess starts. I want you to talk to your family, and I want you to talk to your friends, and I want us to keep the eye, our eyes on the ball. Anything that is not put, presented in court, y'all wanted someone that didn't settle? Y'all wanted somebody to take this to the mat? Baby, little Rod and Tyrone A. Blackburn, the lawyer that's in charge of this, is taking this to the mat. They're taking it to court. And no matter what you see on a Twitter thread, no matter what you see, oh, I heard, I heard, I heard, I heard that Diddy got some of the most powerful, high-priced lawyers on his team. I heard that Diddy didn't get away doing this stuff allegedly for what's, what's being alleged in these complaints for over decades, being deaf, dumb, nor blind. Diddy knows what he's doing. His team knows what he's doing. I would tell you, anybody that else that listens, anybody in your social network, I heard on Twitter somebody came out and said this, baby, you know when you know what's true or not? Let's see what they bring into that court of law. Let's see, no matter what Hassan Hawley says, this is baseless. Let's see what they put in there. Let's see what they put, but not even the reply, because sometimes they put nonsense in the reply because they know it's going to be kicked out, but they don't care because they just wanted to hit the blogs. F the blogs, F YouTube, F what everybody's saying. Baby, everything is an unofficial denial until I see it hashed out in a court of law. Baby, time will tell. You can throw up all the smoke screens you want. What are you going to sit in front of the judge when nobody cares what's on and no shade to the blogs, right? When nobody cares what's pop trended on YouTube, when nobody cares what the comment sections in the shade room, the neighborhood talk to this and that, no shade to them. When nobody cares what's saying, when you have to stand in front and tell the truth or either lose your legal license or be under threat of perjury or literally lose everything you can because you will be exposed. Let's see what's what. Let's see what's what. Let's see what actually stands up. We are in the big leagues now. If you think that Jeffrey Epilator, Jose Maxwell, if you think that the royal family, if you think that who else? Bill Cosby, Harvey Weinstein, line them up, line them up, line them up. If you think that these titans with billion dollar connections, with billion dollar backing, and with billion dollar enablers and people exchange, if you think those people are going to let this go down easy and all of a sudden play for in the rules, when Diddy has shown, if you believe Cassie, which I 100% do, if you believe Tiffany Red, which I 100% do, if you believe these Jane Doe's on all sides, which I 100% do, and if you believe Little Rod, which I 100% do, and if you believe Jonathan Odie, which I 100% do, right? You don't got to believe me. Go look at the evidence yourself. And make up your mind. I'm telling you my evidence, my beliefs, my my opinion based upon information and belief. If you believe 
that all this stuff went on. If you believe there's evil in the industry, if you believe that it's just all one cesspool, then why would y'all sit, not y'all, but why would the people in the back sit there and be like, oh, there's a random person on YouTube. I'm not YouTube. There's a random person on Twitter and he claims that it's him. Do you not think people can be paid off? Do you not think, think people can be bought off? If you Do you not think that if that was not Stevie J, do you not think that Stevie J wouldn't be putting in a defamation suit? Do you not think that Sean Harvey, Saul, Holly, Bobby Sternum, Jonathan Davies, and all these high price attorneys that are powerful, do you not think they wouldn't have said, that ain't even him? That's false. We got the tape. We're subpoena him in. Oh, you going to regret this little Rob? No. What are they doing? That's ridiculous. It's all lies. I feel like I was looking at the Michael Jackson meme. Oh, no. You know that meme with Michael Jackson? It's like, no, no. It's a lie. They made it up. It's a lie. Baby, put your money where your mouth is. Let's see who's still standing when Little Rod said he got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of video evidence. He said he got the full tape. He said he got hours of evidence of what everything was going down. So you know what? Let's see the unofficial denials because Diddy and them think they're going to win this in the court of public opinion. Nobody likes him. This stuff has been going on for years. Everybody got a story to say. Right? They think they're going to do another Tory Lanez. We'll spread. Myself. Remember with the Tory Lanez when there were fake doctor reports passing around Twitter? Remember when there were fake police reports passing around Twitter. People believe that MF, sorry, people believe those mofos so much that there were people literally gangbanging in the comments. How dare you? I saw the doctor's report. What says you? And it was all fake. Remember when DJ Academics was like, well, I saw the doctor's report and he had to delete that because the judge was like, hey, stop playing. Sean Hawley was on the case when all that mess was going on. And it looks like magically, it's happening all over again. Do not believe the hype. Believe what is bought into the court of law. Because you notice all that mess that was circulating online about Meg the Stallion, none of that was bought into the court of law. Why? And, and, D, and academics was also almost uh, uh, punished by the court. None of that was bought into the court of law. Why? Because it was all lie, baby. They made it up. Y'all wanted somebody to go to the mat. Y'all wanted somebody, not y'all, but the people in the back. Y'all wanted somebody to stand on business. Well, baby, grand opening. We standing on business. That Twitter thread, I went and looked through it. There are no pictures. Do you not think a random P star will not come and be paid off? Now, I'm not saying that dude is lying. I'm saying that Stevie J hasn't denied it. I'm saying that the lawyers haven't denied it. And I'm saying, baby, this is just going to be just like the Black China crime. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for this to go to court. Little Rod says he has hundreds of hours, baby. I'm waiting for him to press play. And let's see what happens. Let's see if Sean Hawley doesn't do another departure a couple of months or a month before the case. Let's see if a crazy online smear campaign that never has any actual proof of documents that are filed in court. Let's see if that happens. Let's see if this billionaire record industry and all Diddy's billionaire friends don't come together. Again, you guys, we cannot be this naive. If you believe all the rumors, Diddy is not unprotected. And he is not going down without a fight. I'll tell you one thing. If I was any of them, I would be mad at Diddy. But Diddy said, F it. I ain't fighting for y'all. Y'all fight for yourself. Remember we did a live a couple of weeks ago when the blind items were saying that Diddy was ready to turn over everybody he could in the record industry because he wants to create a smoke screen so he can get out? Baby, they can all put up whatever smoke screens they want. When the feds come, 
when New York State comes, when New York City comes, when this interstate and when the international comes, baby, we'll see what's what. Now, let's get into this mess, right? Let's get in. Listen, exa listen, exactly. If the P star really had that video, he would have put out the whole video instantly to monetize and make money off of it right away. Stevie J would have put up a defamation suit. Diddy and Chart would have been quick to discredit. I found it so odd that during my life, there were people that when I went to the comment section, because y'all know I'd be in the comment section being nosy, right? They were all like, oh, you know, see, this was an 80, 73 page complaint. When I said it was worse than Cassie's, I know of some dizzy let me not call people names, but a dizzy individual had the nerve to say to me, here, you say it's worse than Cassie. Blah, blah, blah. Dummy, shut up. I meant it's worse than Cassie. Not, this ain't the oppression Olympics. I meant it's worse than Cassie's in the fact of the evidence presented was more in depth. Cassie's was 18 pages. This John was 73 pages and had pictures attached. And they said that this was the tip of the iceberg. It was worse than Cassie's in relation to Diddy. Because Diddy, if Cassie crawled through this door, and baby, she crawled. She, I, she, I, thought she, I thought she kicked in the door. Cut the little rod. Little rod is like, and you know what? Let's just chop this door down. But my point is, you guys, tell your friends, tell your family, I want to see justice be done. If all this stuff can be believed, evil like this cannot walk on the street. Corrupting people, when people are desperate for a big great break, when people just want to share their God-given talent with the world, and people want to shine on stage and feel like there's someone. Lots of people go into the music industry for whatever. You shouldn't have to sell your soul anywhere to make a dollar. You shouldn't have to be broken, in, literally and physically, for you to to feel proud and to change your family's fortune. This is evil what's going on. It's evil. And the person that is alleged to be behind it is not stopping. I know some people didn't get the timeline, not the whole part of the lawsuit, but a lot of the stuff that little Rod alleges was going on while Diddy was negotiating with Cassie. Diddy and the Cassie were negotiating for months before they, signed, before they um, settled. Mumps didn't just happen. Diddy got wind that Cassie was going to file. He was trying to be like, wait, 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 wait. His lawyer, Jonathan Davis, looked like he was BSing. Kathy said, Kat, Kathy, Cassie said, you think this is an MF and joke? And Cassie filed and destroyed Diddy's whole life. We said, who could be that stupid? But then Little Rock came. And Diddy was that stupid. For whatever reason, I don't know, they didn't settle. But baby, instead of barking about what's going on, again, again, let's see what's what in court. Let's see what's what when they press play. Let's see what's up. Again, these unofficial denials of these billionaires and the billionaires' lawyers mean nothing. Because if you really, 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 really wanted to get that mess out the way, you would go in front of the court and do it. You know, in the reply, they can say, they can, because they made all these causes of actions. You know that when you reply, because that is the complaint, and then you have to file an answer. You know, if somebody has 10 complaints against you, uh, causes of action and a complaint against you, when you file your answer, you can literally say, you can say yes, you can say no, or you can raise an affirmative defense. An affirmative defense is, well, yes, that's true, but you have a defense that makes it so that you will not be um, liable th by law. You know that in those 10 causes of action, they can move to dismiss the action against Stevie J, right? Saying that is categorically false because, Your Honor, we want to make a motion to dismiss, not the whole case, but we want to make a motion to, dis uh, to dismiss uh, cause of action seven. Where it says, this is not Stevie J, because that is not Stevie J in the case. That is not Stevie J. They then submit evidence. This is the video. This is, this is not. Boom. That part is completely dismissed from the lawsuit. Let's see if they do that. Let's see if, even if they do that, if it gets dismissed. Because you can do a dismissal when there is no reasonable doubt. Like there's no, things that go to court, people are arguing about what's fact.
I'm trying to say this is fact. You're trying to say that. But when there is no argument over what is fact, it gets dismissed. Portions of lawsuit gets dismissed. Or if you can prove everything as a as a verifiable fact, everything. Let's see if that cause of action gets dismissed. We'll see what's what. We'll see what's what. Because I was even thinking about the people in my comments were like, oh, you're not a lot. But they just sounded like bots. And I went, you know, I investigate. I went and I'm like, oh, my God, I think these are bots. Well, I would believe. But the fact that there's not because there's somebody on Twitter that's saying that that's him. This is when the paperwork just dropped. There's a all of a sudden this person comes out. I think the lawyers knew that this was dropping. No, that's me. So where's the tape? Why don't you monetize it? Why don't you monetize it? Why don't you call it Stevie Bay, a night in Paris, right? Stevie Bay, a night in Paris. You could monetize that so quick, but no, you post and stuff, you retweeting, but there's no pictures. It's giving misinformation. It's giving when Meg the Stallions, when the doctor that checked out Meg the Stallions hood, I don't see anything. And they found out it was a completely forged document. That doctor doesn't even exist. And in court, they showed the real thing. Right. Again, again, I remember when there was a huge smear campaign on social media against Rihanna. When Sean Hawley, Diddy's lawyer, also represented Chris Brown. Sean Hawley then went on a statement saying that she reached out to the lawyer, Tyrone A. Blackburn, several times, but he refused to return calls. Does that even sound right? Does that even sound right does that sound right okay sean let me get this straight so you guys are trying to say this is diddy's whole defense one everything's a lie justin everything's a lie um we'll see when the videos come out because this man swears, swears he has hundreds of hours of video time will tell sean hawley says that she tried to reach out to the lawyer five times but he ignored it. But yet, going into court, they're trying to start a narrative, is a cash grab. Even though the naysayers, most of the people supported Cassie, but the naysayers said that if Cassie was really standing on business, then she would have gone to court and had a trial and aired Diddy out. But now that somebody's going to court and having a trial and airing Diddy out, it's a cash grab because if it's a cash grab, they would have answered the phone when Sean Holly allegedly called. And I say that very thinly because they don't it, it don't make sense what they're saying. It really doesn't make sense from a negotiating sound. Do they want money or not? And I got to be honest with you, even if somebody wants money, just like I supported Cashy, I support Little Rob, I support Tiffany Fred, I support those Jados because at the end of the day, that is the point of a civil trial. That is the point of a civil trial. You can bet one thing, Diddy and them messed up because I bet you anything, there are criminal complaints being filed because unlike all that Jane Doe stuff, the stuff that little Rod is alleging happened, what, a year and a half ago? So I'm sure there's evidence of that. Little Rod got the recordings. So Justin and Diddy are saying it didn't happen. Stevie J has not said it didn't happen, but there's a random P star on Twitter claiming that they did side-by-side -side pics. You see how these rumors spread, but everybody's like, where's the side-by-side -side pics? Where's everything? Where is it? Where is it? Where's the video? Because don't underestimate a random P star, right? Instead of monetizing, taking the shot of Stevie, saying this is a shot from my movie, and then saying that both pictures are him, but he's basically using the pictures that were submitted to evidence. Don't sleep on people messing with your mind. Again, if that movie was real, the P star would have would have monetized it and called it, yo, come see my random um a night with Stevie Bay. They would have monetized it. How easy, even if the pictures exist where it's like, no, we put a side by side comparison. How do you know that the comparison that that P star is mysteriously putting up? Why, how do you know that they didn't just take the pictures that are in evidence and then because maybe he's being paid enticed or maybe he's an agent of chaos, he puts it up and he's like, oh, here's a still shot from my movie. Do you see how both pictures match? 
But but the original source of both pictures is that. And why did he not put this out, right? When Stevie J was at the height of his career. Why did he not put it out when Stevie J was on Love and Hip Hop? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, y'all see what I'm saying. Listen, it's the long, listen, it's the long game. We have to, um, we have to take it, okay? Exactly, Sharifa, that's another thing. There's a civil court for money. That is the whole point of civil court. To get injunctions, to make somebody stop doing something, and also for money. We live in America, baby, don't try to change the rules. Like Sharifa says, this is what we about, baby. And let me tell y'all something. People, and you know why civil court exists? Because people like Diddy, in my opinion, the only thing they care about is their money and power. You look at the way Diddy's moving. You can't shame him. He thinks he's above the law. And for 30 years, it looks like he was right. Look at the boy Diddy rate. Justin, you ain't going to shame him. You're not going to shame. No. Mm -mm 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 -mm. The only way to take people down like that is to mess with their money because that's the only time they care. Trust and believe. Anyway, Sharifa says there is a civil court for money and a criminal court for pressing charges. It's a free country, so you can pursue what you like so long as you have evidence. I don't understand the money grab talk either. I don't either, but I'll tell you what. Diddy's lawyers, in my opinion, are trying to do a weird public shaming, right? The fact that, sorry guys, the fact that they're telling people that the reason that, um, the fact that they're telling people that somebody fighting for justice is a money grab in civil court. I don't, I think they're underestimating how disliked their client is. And I think they're underestimating that as much as nobody prior to Cassie, at least as far as I know, there might've been a few people. I'm just talking about when it came on my reader on a, on a huge scale refuse to go to war with Diddy, I think they think that's because there's not that much there or they think people are scared to speak or they think that people, I think they just underestimate how much if you go to Lipstick Alley, if you go to Reddit threads, how much for years people have been talking about the, the grotesque, disgusting things, violent things that Diddy has been alleged to get away with based on information belief. I think they're underestimating how much people want to take that man down. I think they're under SV. This ain't no Tory Lanes. This ain't no Chris Brown. People don't like Diddy. But like Diddy trying to play victim, they don't make me get it cancel culture. No, baby. People don't like you because they either saw what he did, heard about what he did, or he took there's a bunch of reasons. People don't like him because the way he treated Kim Porter. People don't like him because the way he treated Cassie. People don't like him because the way he exploited Kim Porter's stuff. People don't like him because of the stuff that happened with Biggie. People don't like him for a lot of reasons. People don't like him because the way he literally uh, looked like he tried to fight Lori Ann Gibson on making it the back. People don't like him because they see his spirit coming through. And when people don't like you and you combine that, with the fact that you are a billionaire. And in this economy, we are sick of the rich and entitled and privileged getting away with stuff just on a regular level. You add a level of perverseness, you add a level of sadisticness, you add a level of disgustingness. Baby, you gotta go. We already don't even like the fact that there is a what you gotta, you gotta go. You've been given this much blessings, this much opportunity, this much, this much power, and you having free calls, spiking bottles, and trying to seduce straight men. Mm -mm. You literally, you are literally chasing a woman you said you love down the street and trying to crack her face open so bad that she had to crawl behind a toilet? You hanging people out of 17 floor windows? You planting allegedly, to Cassie's complaint, car bombs? Because people looked at the girl that you are literally using as your personal punching bag? This is what you do with this access? 
This is what you do with this power. And you got the nerve to be in church every Sunday talking about some Jesus. Praise God. You got the nerve to be doing vote or die. You got the nerve to be putting out things about we're going to protect our black woman. No, baby, you got to get the F out of here. You got to get out of here. You got to get out of here before we make you go. You got the nerve to have all those blessings. And I would say from God, but baby, me and Diddy, if this can be believed, we don't pray to the same God. But you got all the, baby, you got to get the hell out of here. I think that the lawyers underestimated how disliked he is. They thought he would get the R. Kelly treatment, or for some reason, people got R. Kelly in their heart and souls. They don't got that in Diddy. Baby, they see the demon horns sticking out. And they said, oh, oh, oh. And there's too many people that went to too many parties that saw too many things, too many talking. Diddy cannot play victim on this one. He can't play victim because nobody cares because he's not one. And everybody feels that. He can't. And the fact that even Justin denying it, first of all, the fact that he let, this would let you know why. I would imagine Misa so angry. Justin had a full, uh, Justin got accepted into Harvard. Diddy convinced him no. Took him to UCLA. Got him on the football team. Beat up his football uh, team coach. Then he just turned into like, oh, what you, you the future of bad boy. He still hasn't passed that torch over to Justin. Right? Maybe he jealous of his own son. Maybe Justin's more talented. Maybe Justin's better looking. Maybe Diddy won't let anybody outshine him. But what do you say about a father? Because here's the thing. I don't know much about legal. But I will say this. When somebody comes at you for money, or like Sean Holly likes to say, a cash grab, right? You know that like they will negotiate different things. You know that, right? You know that Diddy could have been like, fine, I'm going to go to court and fight this but you know he could have literally negotiated i would imagine to keep justin's name out of this you know he could have spread some of his money around and kept justin's name out of it he could have spread some of that money out and kept young miami's name out of it he could have paid a little bit of that and kept stevie j's name out of it now why i you would wonder well why would he keep stevie j's name? stevie j's a grown man okay fine right but he could have kept young miami's name out of it just paid something he could have kept, right, his, what, firstborn son, for, firstborn son, second son, he could have paid whatever they were asking, or at least negotiated to keep Justin's name. It would have been redacted, a known producer, a known record label holder. He could have did that, but he chose not to. Ask yourself why. As much as Diddy wants to play the father of the year, look at the way they treated, he treated Kim Porter. Look at the way he treated Misa. Look at the way he's treated every woman in his life. Look at the way when Misa had to go to court because he wanted to pay 5,000 um, a month in child support for Justin, his firstborn son. But, right? But, he was paying Kim Porter, what was it, 34000 a month? 34000 a month. And he was paying Misa 5000 for the longest for his firstborn son. Y'all really think, and I think people have bought into it long enough, this whole thing about him being a loving, devoted father, when the lawsuit says that they were participating in free calls together, and it's not the first time that people have heard about free calls. Jonathan Adi, go watch my playlist on Jonathan, came out and said, that. So again, and he told us about the free calls back in 2014. All the details, what they like to party with, which was confirmed by Cassie and this lawsuit, what they do, blah, 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 blah. Tell me I'm lying. Baby, Diddy, we, until this is proven in court of law, baby, we don't believe you. You need more people. We don't believe you. You need more people. And baby, again, Let's get into this. Also, I'm going to stop ranting, but if anybody wants a quick 
uh, uh, you know, 10 minute summary. I'll post the 10 minute summary of the pleading, um, of at least this part of the pleading. Um, actually, I'll break down it all into 10 minute increment videos so y'all can get it really fast. Now, let's get into this mess, okay? I'm gonna have to break these court documents down today. We are only focusing on that se section, okay? I do need to point out that Diddy. I believe, like we said before, is on some F everybody. What does Reverend T.D. Jakes have to do with this? Because regardless of what's going on the internet or what T.D. Jakes is, is not into this and that, baby, we're not focusing on that. Here's what we are focusing on. How he was too, right, bought into the conversation by Diddy. Okay? This is the saddest part. Diddy even tried or planned to take down T.D. Jakes. Now, I don't know what Diddy and T.D. Jakes' relationship actually is and the nature of it. A lot of other channels speak on that. I'm staying away from that because I actually I don't know enough to really comment on it, okay? However, the lawsuit clearly points out that Diddy tried to take down Reverend T.D. Jakes, okay? How? Well, let me read in the lawsuit. This is page 8 of 73. This is paragraph F. Diddy detailed, and they said they have this, proof of this. Diddy detailed how he planned to leverage his relationship with Bishop T.D. Jakes to soften the impact of his public image of the Cassie Ventura lawsuit. Remember when I told you guys that this overlapped and a lot of this creepy mess that Diddy is alleged to do in this lawsuit overlapped with Cassie's lawsuit. Again, Cassie filed in November. This They had been aware of this lawsuit for months before then. Diddy was actively trying to engage with her to settle. Apparently that lawyer it looked like played too many games and Cassie just filed. And that's a gag. Did, did he still ended up settling? But getting back into all this. So while he was negotiating with Cassie, he was having parties with peep girls that don't have 18 candles on their cake. I got to speak in code. I don't want to get this, this live stream pulled down again. He was, we're going to go into the papers in a second. He was spiking bottles. He was walking around, according to this, with his enabler assistant, his just saying Maxwell to his Diddy, KK, Christina Corum or whatever. He was actively trying to spike bottles, waking up in bed, unbeknownst to little Rob with two blank workers. He was still having freak-offs while he was negotiating a settlement. Prior to Cassie falling in November, negotiating a settlement for the freak offs. And little Rod claims that he has them. Again, they can bark all they want. Baby, I can't wait to go to court. I will be covering this. I'll actually fly to the court if I need to. He was telling everybody that listened and to little Rod detailed how he planned on leveraging his connection with T.D. Jakes Two, soften the impact on his public image when he thought, when he was, was wasting Cassie's time and thought he was going to just get all his ducks in a row. That's what he thought. That's what the lawsuit implies. Did he thought when Cassie was like, yo, I got this lawsuit. We're going to do something. Did he was like, no, 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 no. Let's negotiate. Let's negotiate. Cassie, because it's her life, her choice was like, what are you talking about? Because I want to see you pay. Right? They were negotiating. How can I pay? Because at the end of the day, what you see happening in Little Rod, they 100% would have done to Cassie. Smear campaigns, Twitter campaigns, pulling up third grade boy girlfriend, um, boyfriends. Oh, she was doing this in the bathroom when she was fourth grade or just making up crazy stuff, right? He was devising a plan to not only ruin Cassie's reputation so nobody would believe her in the lawsuit it's before she settled. But also, he was going to use T.D. Jakes. He was going to use his relationship 
to T.D. Jakes to soften the blow at the Cassie lawsuit. You know how it is whenever people run to the black church. Bill Clinton did it. Bill Cosby did it. I'm surprised Harvey Weinstein didn't do it, right? Soften the blow and run to the black church to wrap their arms around the flock to embrace this man and move around. And meanwhile, I don't know if T.J. Jakes know what Diddy was into, but if he didn't, Meanwhile, meanwhile, T.T. Jakes, Diddy's plan was to get his flock to surround Diddy and raise him up and uplift him. Didn't they say the devil is a liar? Didn't they say? Imagine if his plan had worked for him to literally br bring down T.T. Jakes, blackmail T.T. Jakes. I don't know how he was going to do it, but he was telling everybody. He detailed the plan to take down T.G. Jakes. Now ask yourself, with Diddy, Little Rod is saying he got proof of all this. And Sean, Diddy, Justin, everybody can say it's category untrue. Baby, put your money where your mouth is. Where is that reply? Put your money where your mouth is. Even when we get that reply, because we know lawyers be acting real funny in replies. What, let's see what makes it in the court. Let's see if this court case makes it into court. But when it does, let's see what happens when that, whatever it is, VHS, I don't even know where the footage is, but when they press play. And let's see what happens. Now, this is what I wanted to talk to you guys about. All right. Are y'all ready for this? Let's get into this. Okay. Um, hold on, y'all. Okay, so, hey, everybody's uh, open house. Okay, so let's get into this, right? So here's the thing. I think, this is what I want to talk about, where they're specifically denying. The Shallows Recording Studio shooting. They're saying this is all a completely a lie. It's all fabricated. It's all made up. Okay, this is page eight of the complaint. They said, on or about September 12, 2022, Diddy held a writer and producer's camp at Chalice Recording Studio at 845 Highland Avenue. Present at this camp was Diddy, his son Justin, and Justin's friend named G. G is 30 years old. He's tall. He is a black male. In addition to these individuals, other musicians were present at the camp. Let me just get through this really quick. And then I want to tell y'all what I investigated and the way Diddy and them saying that this is 100% a lie, they exposed themselves as 100% lie because baby, we went directly to Chalice Studios. Okay, hold on. Now, in addition to these individuals, other musicians were present at the camp. Okay. The writer, who I assume is the lawyer, has spoken to several musicians who attended the camp. One evening during this camp, Diddy, Justin Combs, and G were in a heated conversation. That conversation was moved out of the studio and into a restroom adjacent to where um, uh, Little Rob was sitting. Now, just to let you know, when you walk into Chalice Studios, I'm going to go into that. But once you get past the heavy, heavy security, okay, you walk past like this whole reception area where a couch is, and then you walk past that. There's Studio A. There's Studio B. You have to walk past that. There's like a little lounge, kind of like kitchen area. And then there is a bathroom. So there's kind of like a shared bathroom. It's a big space, but you get what I'm saying, right? So little Rod, it seems like, was sitting in that whole kitchen, like lounge area where the, close to where the bathroom is, about two feet from the bathroom. Diddy, G, and Chunk, Justin, right? Pay attention because we are about to bust this lie wide open. They're saying everything is completely false. Baby, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Anyway. They said it was, they had a heated conversation. The conversation was moved out of the studios. We don't know whether they were in studio A or B. It doesn't matter. Neither studio has a bathroom inside. You have to go to the common area to get to the bathroom. They moved the conversation out of the studio and into the bathroom adjacent to where little Rod was sitting. 
Little Rob was approximately two feet away from the bathroom when bang bangs ran, rang out. Bang, bang, bang. Little Rob recalls hearing multiple bang bangs. Little Rod immediately went into a state of shock and he feared that he would be shot next. Again, if you guys don't know Little Rod, he is literally a church boy. He grew up in the church industry. He did, he produced for the Clark sisters. He's super talented, but he ain't what listen, he he is not riding out screaming thug life till I die. And baby, I've done the same thing. You hear multiple bang bangs two feet from where you're sitting, I would have been like, immediately went into a state of shock because he feared he would be bang, bang next. Little Rod genuinely believed that he would have been bang, bang through the door due to how close he was. Now, the lawyer does said that he spoke with several employees. Oh, wait, that's about the yacht. Um, That's about the yacht where Diddy was doing just like... <laughs> He was having freak offs the same way Jonathan Odie described he was having on yachts. Ask yourself why. Look at myself on Jonathan Odie. Ask yourself why Jonathan Odie went a little crazy. Ask yourself how everything he said that Diddy was doing, it's been not proven, but eight years later, everybody's a legend. Yeah, Diddy did it. Did he do it? Did he did it? What didn't Diddy did do? Anyway, right? They say after the shooting ended, a crowd gathered around the restroom, okay? When the door finally opened, Diddy and Justin walked out. G was lying on the restroom floor in a fetal position, holding his stomach and bleeding out of his leg, hip area. Three people were in the restroom. Two people walked out. One was there. Diddy said, this is all lies. Let's keep going. Everyone stood around looking upon G, frustrated by the lack of aid to G, okay? Little Rod dropped everything, ran to G, and immediately began placing pressure on G's G wound to his stomach. As he was applying pressure to G's stomach, Little Rod realized that G was gushing. Oh, from another industry, sorry, another industry in the leg and hip. He decided to lift G, place them on the toilet to sit. And little Rod, act so small, sorry guys. Little Rod, sorry guys, I got to pull out my um, notes because that is just too tiny for me to read. Y'all can zoom in if y'all want. Okay, hold on. Okay. He decided to lift G and place them on the seat in the sit on the toilet. Little Rod asked the crowd to call the ambulance. Little Rod lifted G and brought him to the ambulance at the studio's front. So when the ambulance arrived, they carried him to the ambulance. Okay. At this time, Diddy and Justin disappeared to another part of the studio. There are multiple recording areas. Okay, recording studios there. Diddy then gave strict instructions to inform the police that he had nothing to do with the shooting. He also told Little Rod to inform the police that G was shot standing outside the studio by a drive-by assailant. Again, in the court docs, he attaches the CBS News thing, man shot outside party at Hollywood Recording Studio. It said officers were called to the scene. Um... The man in his 30s was taken to the hospital in stable condition, reportedly in the abdominal. Tell me, y'all wanted y'all wanted to know how Cassie endured for so long and nobody stopped it? How all these accusations, well, if it's true, how could Diddy get away with it? Tell me how. And this happened in 2022, September, in the middle of LA and one of the most prominent recording studios. Diddy and his son were somehow even if they didn't put it on him, were somehow involved in a shooting. And that did not make TMZ. That did not make nightly news. That did not make anything. Baby, this was very, you had to look very, very deep on CBS. It's not even on any of the media things. How is that possible? How is that possible? Tell me. 
When Cat Williams was harassed by the media, harassed by the police, harassed by TMZ, they raided his house 19 times, charged him with 19 felonies, not one conviction, because it was all trumped up. Ask me how this stuff happened with Diddy. I do believe they actually later on say that Diddy had a connect, that Diddy has a fixer that gets him out of all criminal charges. That gets him out of even the police looking into it. Let's not forget, and I'm not even being funny. Let us not forget that Training Day, that movie with Denzel Washington about the crooked cop that was literally running all the guns, all the drugs, all that crazy stuff, and the and, and the violence, the gang-related violence, right? They were a task force that was going to set it down they literally ended up being the ones that were running all that. Please don't forget that Training Day was actually based on a real life story. Training Day was real. Denzel's character was real. Ethan Hawke's character was real. And ask yourself again, how did, did he do it? Look at this. They literally said he was reportedly shot in the abdominal. Sky 2 was over the scene Monday, spotted several people sitting outside the location being questioned by police. No information was released about the suspect. And, it, and it's not known if the shooting was game related. And that's it. That's the only thing you hear about. Does that even sound right? But don't worry, because there's more. There's more. Let me just get in to this. There, there is more, beloveds. Hold on. There's more. There we go. Mr. Jones had several cooperating witnesses who spoke with the lawyer, I guess as Mr. Backburn, anonymously due to fear or retaliation from Diddy. Can you guys ask yourself why everybody is afraid of Diddy? What type of power, connections, and people on lock does Diddy have that this can, everybody knows? that there was a shooting. Remember, I reported a couple of weeks ago that my sources, and there were blind items that said that, yo, Diddy was involved in a shooting with Justin in 2022, but everybody's scared to come forward. And look what happens. It's in the lawsuit, right? There are plenty of witnesses that can cooperate, that want, can cooperate, but right now they want to rename anonymous out of fear of retaliation from Diddy. They've agreed to speak publicly when they are subpoenaed in court. Do you see how everybody, y'all wanted little Rob to fight, baby? He bringing people forward. Also, I'm pretty sure they probably filed a criminal complaint against Diddy too. Diddy has, I'm sorry, little Rod still has the clothing he wore that day and believed it may still have stains and DNA of G's blood. They put the, they said the following are screenshots of the aftermath of the restroom where G was bang bang by either Diddy or Justin Combs. Now, hold on guys. I do have to point out that when there are three people in a room and something happens to one and you can't figure out who did it, both people in the room are uh, are liable until one of them can prove it's not them. The thing speaks for itself. Okay? Now, he gives pictures that G took of the aftermath in the restroom. These pictures in the restroom, I'm about to blow Diddy's lies, in my opinion, wide open. Justin and Diddy said this is all fabrication. It never happened. Baby, we're going to see who fabricating because your girl did research in Chalice. Your girl has proof. Now, pay attention. It's very important. This is ketchup, if you will. Pay, this is ketchup smeared all over the bathroom. Okay, it's not blood, you guys. YouTube, you don't have to strike me down, but it's ketchup. Okay. It's all over the place. This is the scene of what happened in the bathroom. You need to remember these pictures because they are very important. Just have a few more lines and we're going to get into tearing Diddy up and presenting the evidence that your girl, your Nancy Drew, what it do, Hood Scooby-Doo Mysteries was on it. They said clearly G was not shot 
outside of the studio as Diddy instructed his team to report to law enforcement. They're saying that by evidence of the uh, bathroom. Diddy and the defendants, Love Records, Motown Records, Universal Music Group, and um, Chalice Recording Studios provided private security for the writer's camp um, at defendants' Chalice Security food, uh, Studios. The security was porous and lackluster at best. The fact that Diddy and Justin were allowed to enter Tyler's recording studios with bang bangs and those bang bangs were not confiscated by security is a clear breach of duty by Diddy, uh, Love Recording, uh, I'm sorry, Love Records, Motown Records, Universal Music Group, and uh, to protect uh, Little Rod and other attendees at the writer's camp. As a result of this blank, blah, 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 Little Rod is very, very, very traumatized. Okay. So Diddy, Sean Hawley, his lawyer, and I believe um, Justin all said that this was completely fabricated. It was completely a lie. Everything was nothing but flights of fancy. Don't you know that never happened? How dare you, you big fat liar. So let's go and look at what I found out about um, Chalice Studios, shall we? First of all, Chalice Studios literally got the security of a bank. And by that, I mean, when you first come to Chalice Studios, there are cameras all over the exterior of Chalice Studios. This is where the shooting should place. Diddy's and D Justin lawyers are like, how dare you? Nothing happened inside Chalice. He got shot outside by a drive-by. And he came into the studios and bled in the bathrooms. And we had to take him out of the bathroom out front because he was running away from the drive-by. It would sound good to anybody that make it seem like you could just run in the Chalice Studios. But let me tell you about the way Chalice Studios are going to uh, set up. And then let me tell you how the way I think this really happened. So when you go to Chalice Studios or at the entrance, before you can even enter the building, there's cameras everywhere. And there is deep security. You need to buzz in and identify yourself. Hi, Tisa Tells for uh, Justin Combs. Hi, Tisa Tells for Sean Combs, right? You need to be buzzed in. Once you are buzzed in, you're still not in the studio, right? That just lets you walk into the door. Then there is a receptionist that is protected, right? That literally asks you, what are you doing here? Who are you here to see? You then, the receptionist is protected, okay? She's not just sitting out in the open. She's protected. Because it's a recording studio. Things happen in recording studios. I guess they've had a lot of stuff happen, right? They are protected. You then have to tell the receptionist who you're there to see. The receptionist then has to call back to verify with the parties that you are in there, you are indeed there to see those parties. Once the receptionist who is behind um looks like bulletproof. Uh, glass or whatever says okay then they buzz you in after you get confirmation they buzz you in when you walk in there's a little like couch area that's where the real reception is because you've been verified that you can come in that's where the real reception is there's a little so you've already gone through two buzz checks and you can't pow pow your way in because I guess Chalice Studios had problems before. Baby, that place is like Fort Knox. You would just ain't coming in there and talking about some run up, get done up. There's a little like couch area, reception area, right? Then you walk past that. Okay. And I guess that's where you're chilling when you can't go into the studios. There's like, you see Studio A on one side, you see Studio B on the other, right? You walk past those studios and you go further back and there's like a little kitchen area, lounge area that you can also chill in. And then to the side of that, you go into that and turn down and then that is the bathroom. Okay. So 
Diddy and Justin want us to believe, right? That G, right? Was shot not just in front of Chalice, but he was shot a block or two down from Chalice Studios. He got shot in the abdominum, and it looks like he got shot in the hip and leg. After this man two blocks away, this is what Diddy and, and Justin want us to believe, and Sean Hawley. And this is what I mean about when you look at their lies and actually listen to what they're saying, I believe they're lying. It has not been, this is my base, this is my speculation. But let me tell you what they expect us, I think they expect us to believe. This man was a couple of blocks away from the studio. He got shot in the abdomen and in the hip and leg. He then walked two blocks, two blocks down the street to Chalice Studios. But that's not it. He is bleeding out, literally bleeding out. He then stops to check notes, buzz in to the front door. Hi, I'm here with the Diddy Love Records recording party. The receptionist inside behind a bulletproof glass then looks at the camera, sees somebody. I would imagine he's calmly bleeding out after being shot in the abdomen and leg, buzzes him in to the holding studio because they got cameras everywhere so they can see what's up. Buzzes him into the holding area. She is now behind bulletproof flash. She sees somebody bleeding out. She does not call the police. She does not do anything. He's bleeding out. Again, he's been shot in the abdominal and the hip and leg after he's walked two weeks. So he made it past security checkpoint number one. Then, right, they have another where he has to be buzzed in again. Because... They at, then he when he's inside he tells them I'm here for the strong the, the, uh, the Diddy stuff oh okay uh, Diddy there's a gentleman here that claims he's with your retorting party because again he was outside right it's the first time he's been in Chalice Studio there's a gentleman here Diddy okayed it they then buzzed him in with up uh, bleeding from the stomach and the hip and leg area buzz him in he then walks past. The lounge area with all these couches after he's been buzzed in two times. Let's also not forget the chalice also, I believe, has security that does the one medical de detector, right? So you get past that security. You walk past the lounge area with all these couches still bleeding out. You walk past Studio A. You walk past Studio B where Diddy's people are and where Diddy and Justin are at. People are there. You, this is your first time in Chalice. You walk then past the kitchen lounge area and you find the bathroom and then you decide to lay on the bathroom floor. And Diddy and Justin want us to believe that happened. And then it's not over. You then want us to believe that little Rod then picked up the man that did all this carried him to an ambulance by himself because Diddy's saying this didn't happen. The lawyer says there's a bunch of people to corroborate this. Diddy and Justin are like absolutely pure lies. Then, right, they carry him to the front where the, when the ambulance arrives. Little G and whoever else, Little Rod and whoever else helped him. The police swarm in. Oh, and get this. The police swarm in. They do not. Now, mind you, this man, they're saying, was shot a couple of blocks away. They do not find any evidence of any blood anywhere in that two blocks that he ran, walked with his stomach and his leg and his hip. They don't find any evidence out on the, on the California streets. There's no blood in the park. There's no evidence anywhere. The only place that they see evidence of any gushing is in that bathroom. That's the only place that they see in the bathroom. And they don't see two, they don't see uh uh any 
blood on the handle outside. They don't see this. They don't see it in it. No, they don't even see two trails of blood. They just see a one-way trail of blood coming from the bathroom all the way to the parking lot where the ambulance was waiting, where they carried him out. And Diddy and them, right? There's no blood on the street. There's no blood on the lobby. There's no blood in the hallway because they carried him out a certain way. It's only blood in the bathroom. And there's multiple witnesses corroborating that. Now, when I say that the devil is working hard, I'm not being funny. When I say that we are now going to get a taste of what Cassie avoided by settling, and shout out to Cassie for kicking that door open. Shout out to um, uh, uh, Tiffany Red. Shout out to Tyrone A. Blackburn. Shout out to all the Jane Doe's that are still suing Diddy. Shout out to Douglas Wigmore. Shout out to everybody that's fighting the good fight. There's a reason why Douglas Wigmore, and he has high profile as he is, there's a reason why Tyrone Blackburn, they took these cases. This ain't no Mickey Mouse stuff. This is the type of misinformation. This is the type of gaslighting. This is the type of don't believe your lying eyes. And if you listen to these mysterious people on Twitter, and I'm not shading anyone on Twitter. Y'all know I'm on social media too, baby. I, before I had a voice. I didn't have a voice. And even now, and I don't really have a voice. It's just you and me talking. But you have to realize that the same way Diddy was able to exercise his power, influence, and control over a whole record label so that his girlfriend got viciously beaten in an album release party so bad she had to crawl behind a toilet to save her life. Face cracked open, hair ripped out, the worst of the worst things. Cassie literally went to MF and war, right? Being with that man. She's lucky she survived mentally and physically. She's lucky. Lucky. The fact that that man literally either intimidated, if these words can be true, bought off, Paid off, intimidated, or you know those flunkies that don't care because they just want to be there. They just want to be there doing the Harlem Shake with Diddy. You know how the flunkies are. If he had a whole MF and record label, industry, rappers, according to these people, had some of the rappers bending it over and literally taking it against their will. What the F you think a, a blogger on YouTube is? What the F you think somebody on Twitter is? You think they don't like money? You think they don't want access? Do you think that there is not always going to be someone in every industry to bow down the power? Look at when people are at work trying to get equal pay. And it's some knucklehead being like, I'll take the $8. When you're like, if we just all stuck together, we would all have 20 an hour. And people are like, I'll take the $8. I don't care. Move out my way. And you just looking like we ain't never going to be free. This is what I mean about it is we are at war right now. Y'all wanted this. I wanted this. And now it's happening. Do not be distracted. Do not let these lies. Literally, when they tell you a story before it gets reposted a million times on Twitter, think about it. How did that happen? Where's the evidence? What do you mean? What do you mean? What? do you mean? You ain't talking about nothing. You were just trying to save, Diddy's trying to save himself. And then, and again, I don't want to speak on anybody's parent-child relationships, but from what I see, which is going on with Justin, it makes me sad. The fact that that man could have kept his firstborn child's name out of that lawsuit by just rolling over but at the end of the day just literally diddy is treating justin in my opinion the same way he treated kim porter the same way he treated everyone now that he didn't settle and get justin's name out the lawsuit you are diddy thinks that he's just like whatever this is what my opinion of what i think he's thinking okay diddy's just like whatever 
You save yourself, whatever, blah, 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 right? But Diddy doesn't realize that the only last bit of goodwill, if you can even believe he got goodwill, the only little bit of last goodwill that he has with the public is the fact that people believe that he can be a good father. Now, baby, I've always been under the, 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 the thought that I don't believe that you can beat a woman senseless and come home and kiss your child. I don't believe those two things exist. I don't believe that a demon does not demon all the time. I really don't. Just like I don't believe that people that abuse their children can be loving good mates. I don't. I don't believe that someone that comes and puts a bang bang in somebody's head can be a loving, devoted father or mother. I don't believe those things exist. I think this is this weird trope we had that like he was a vicious gangster that had the whole city on block, but he loved his family like no other. No, baby. The same way, the same way when people, when that you will prey on others and throw people under the bus and use people for your own benefit to get ahead, to build a kingdom. It's the same way that when your own blood is standing in your way, I believe that you will go through them too. But here's the thing that Diddy doesn't realize. And it makes me wonder about what's going on with his defense team. Because baby, listen, I don't know about all the settlement stuff. I do know that I watch uh, uh, social media. I do know that I pay close attention to what's going on to the blogs. I do know that I understand a little bit. Okay, I'm not claiming to be an expert, but I understand the way social media works. I do know the way public opinion works, at least enough to recognize when it's happening. Nobody said I'm Olivia Pope and can like turn wine into water, but I can see what happened. The last little vestige a public sympathy that Diddy has, the last little vestige of public understanding that Diddy has, the last little vestige of salvation that can save Diddy is the fact that people still believe, but misguided, but they still believe that Diddy might have treated Kim Porter like trash. He might have treated Misa Hilton Brooke. He might have treated Sarah like trash. He might have treated every woman he was with like trash. But that man loved his babies. And he he's a good father. You can't take up. You remember, he's a good father. Once the final mask that Diddy wears falls away, and it's going to fall, mark my words, it's going to fall away when this case hits court that Diddy is a loving, devoted father, baby, there ain't going to be any redemption or salvation for him in heaven, hell, or on this earth, up above or below. There will be no salvation. And it's weird to me that his lawyer team doesn't see that. It's weird to me that they don't understand what's going on. It's weird to me. It's weird to me that Diddy wouldn't come off some cash to protect his firstborn son from the truth, if this can be believed, coming out. Again, they're saying everything's a lie. We just figured out that what they're saying can't be true and what happened with Chalice Studios. And baby, this is just one-tenth of the paperwork. And we just did this on a YouTube Live without forensics, without experts, without oaths, without judges. Without... We just figured out, does anybody know what happened in Chalice Studios? No, only the people that were there. Can we 100% say that Diddy and Justin say, well, nothing's 100%, but can we more likely than not say that Diddy and Justin sound like the, that they're the ones that lying, saying that Rod is 100% lying when we just ascertained that Rod's story is the only story that makes sense when it comes to what happened to G? What did happen to G? Y'all ever hear about it? Did you hear Justin saying, pray? And again, G was what? Justin's best friend? Did you hear? see Justin post on Instagram, play, pray for my homie G? Did you see Diddy? Did you do it? Did you? Does that even sound right? Your good friend get, is, is literally with you, with your dad? Why he's getting his record? Something happens and you don't even say pray? You don't try to start a good fund me? You don't do anything? Hmm? The police don't pick it up. But, mm, all right. I'm just saying, Diddy was dumb not to settle. But then again, I get it. Diddy don't give a F about anyone but himself. I think so. 
And the thing is, I thought he was dumb because I was like, don't you care about like your firstborn getting caught up in your BS? Because like Misa Hilton Britton said, Diddy's gotten Justin caught up in a lot of his BS. Don't you care? No, he's only trying to save himself. But everybody else got this thing. He, the fact that the lawyers are now going to let this lawsuit says that Justin participated in FOs with his father. He participated in FOs. Once Diddy's, in my opinion, fake family man persona falls to the wayside, it's over. It's curtains. It's a wrap. That's the only reason people give him grace. What y'all think? That is the only reason people give him grace. And the fact that they did that, y'all, listen, I know I keep saying that. Make sure you talk to your family. Make sure you talk to your friends. Make sure you guys are out in Twitter, social media, doing whatever. Literally pushing back on the false narratives. Telling them, yo, telling the trolls, yo, don't, I don't want to, don't do any hateful anything. Let's keep love, right? Haha, -ha, an oxymoron. Let's spread love, right? But anyway, it's time for us to start pushing back on the narratives. Being this is a troll account, time will tell. Yeah, let's see what happens in court. For all these people, I heard, I heard, I heard. Where is it? There's no evidence. They'll see it in court. How come the lawyers haven't filed it? How come this hasn't happened? How come that hasn't happened? And then it actually occurred to me also, I said to myself, even if, and I 100% believe this, because they said they have the full video, even if this was, even if this was, um, uh, a, uh, 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 let's just say they did show a P star that looked like Stevie J. Let's just say everything, uh, that P star on Twitter is saying is true. That wasn't CBJ. That was me. Blah, 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 blah. Doesn't that still make it sick? Because what little Rod said was Diddy kept trying to get him to bend it over and bust it open. And little Rob was like, mm-mm, you ain't getting any of these yams, right? But he wanted to work. He wanted an opportunity. He found, And also, Diddy has this weird thing. That's how Cassie stayed for 10 years. That's how Tiffany Red saw Diddy running through high as a kite. And just like, everybody realizes how untouchable he is. And the fact that the fact that he can put a bomb in somebody's car and the police don't even investigate, just like somebody gets murked in a drive-by, Mm -mm. But let's just say everything that Peace Star was true because we're going to have to do this and follow this out to its logical state. We're going to have to do it. We can't rely on the mainstream media to tell us the truth. I'm not saying they're going to lie, but when it comes to things this big and people this protective, we're going to have to take what they say, chew the, like, right? Take everything in, uh, chew the meat, swallow the meat, and spit out the fat. That's what we're going to have to do. So let's just say everything this PSR is saying is true. That's that, what little Rod is saying that Diddy, in order to get little Rod to bend over and bust it open for a player, right? Pop up on that ish and do a full split. To get him to do all that, Diddy told him and showed him this video and said, see, even your idol Stevie J is doing it. And even your idol Stevie J is gay. Everybody in the industry is gay. Everyone. I got tapes on everybody. This is what Little Rod is alleging that Diddy said. And Little Rod is also alleging that he has proof of everything. Now, when you take into account Cassie, and this is before the lawsuit, said that somebody was circulating an S tape about her. When you keep in mind that 50 Cent says that Diddy showed him an S tape of Cassie. No, I'm sorry. D Diddy, no, 50 Cent saw an S tape of Cassie, called Diddy to warn him. And Diddy was like, oh yeah, where'd you see that? Diddy, as possessive as he was of Cassie, Diddy, as jealous as he was of Cassie, Diddy, 
as obsessed as he was over Cassie, was letting S tapes of Cassie float around the music industry. Now, mind you, 50 Cent said that Diddy was, Ben tried to sleep with him, wanted to take him shopping, and he wanted him to hop up on that ish and do a full split. Right? Does this not sound like a pattern? Diddy shows those type of materials, hoping to get the person in the mood, hoping to find the opportunity to give them something to drink. Slip does it not sound does it not sound like what Jonathan Adi said that him and Cassie was into in 2014? Does it not sound like what all the Jane Doe's are accusing Diddy of? Maybe habits are habits are habits. And the fact that Diddy's team is trying to gaslight us into thinking that multiple people coming out and not just agreeing with what Cassie says, but literally amplifying, amplifying these cries so that they rise up to heaven demanding justice. They are now trying to turn that into a negative. It's too many people. How about your client was a monster? How about that? How about that? It's too many people. This is a cat, cat. This is a money grab. This is this. This is that. How about that? How about that? How about that? How about that? Listen. I don't know, y'all. What y'all think? What do y'all think? Listen, exactly. Private Nine, the natural woman, said he got videos of everybody. 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 Y'all, what do y'all think? They said, did he forgot about the audio on tapes that Cassie turned in? They're just going to line up with Little Rod. Exactly. But again, my point is, and y'all, there are 4,817 people in here. Baby, I don't believe for one moment that a lie spreads quicker than the truth. I don't. Because once there's something about the truth, even if you don't know if you're hearing it, it resonates on a deep level. What did Cat Williams said? God's people ain't that few. If we, and I say we, everybody that wants evil out of the neighborhood literally make sure that's a troll let's see in court let's do that and don't let them switch the narrative because they're going to keep throwing things at the wall at the wall at the wall did he don't fear god if these things can be alleged as true his lawyers don't fear god y'all this man let his son his first but uh his first born son he let his firstborn son be involved in this mess because he didn't want to pay to get him out. And they got the evidence. It looked like they got him dead to right. Diddy at this point don't care. And I don't care. I think he'll let anybody go down with him. Mm. But the fact that Diddy, his lawyer, this is 100% untrue. Everything in the lawsuit is a lie. No. And let's also not forget, when we get back to Child's Records, not only did the police find anything, did not find anything, they literally kept, went all over the bathroom, collected evidence, this and that. There wasn't any evidence of him running up to the building on the video. There wasn't any evidence of the security cameras of him initially entering, all bloody, bleeding out, being buzzed in two times, going through security, then walking past a lounge area, walking past Studio A and B, finding the kitchen, going past the kitchen, going into the bathroom. There's no security footage of that. Okay. There's no Amazon ring lights. There's nothing. No people down the block heard any shots. Okay. All right, Diddy. Yo, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Listen, good luck. Really quick, I want to give a shout out to woo, Tommy Lee, Tommy Bites Homestead. Thank you. So y'all follow Tommy Bites Homestead on 
uh, YouTube. She has great content. And also, thank you for rejoining the membership. You guys, um, I'm about to get out of here, but I just do want you guys to know that I will be doing my members only live tomorrow. It was supposed to be Monday, but as you guys know, Ish came up with this. Also, this lawsuit, I'm going to have to, I'm going to recap this live into a 10 minute live tomorrow. Um, just to like, so you guys get like the, the gist of what's going on. And I will reconvene tomorrow and we will do the other 10 parts of this lawsuit. Baby, I got all the documents and we will go through them in detail. And just like you saw on this, yes, I will put the documents up on the Summer Jam screen so you guys can read along for yourself. I'll tell you one thing, Diddy is not getting away with this. All right. Y'all stay safe out there. Okay. Y'all stay safe out there. Oh, you're welcome, Tommy. Y'all make sure you follow Tommy by Tomstead. All right. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.